Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to show you Photoscape X. Now this is a fun and very simple photo editor to use and you can do some basic painting on this one. Um, I'm going to run through this one as a basic tutorial but I think you're going to learn it in a hurry and you'll start playing around making some really fun things. If you're not sure of uh, what you're looking for for a free uh, Photoshop alternative, take a look at this uh, video that I have where I go through my top five ranges depending on what you're looking from for skill and even your computer that you have. So let's get started today though with Photoscape X, this beginner's tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up my Photoscape X. You can see I have it right on my desktop here. I'm going to open this up. I'm on Windows 10. I have used this on my Mac before and it works quite, uh, quite well there too. So right away, I've already opened up this before and you can see at the bottom left hand corner, there's a folder with some pictures, this folder right here. This was next, uh, this was on my desktop next to the shortcut. And I put some images in there. Since that was the last one I was in, that's what it remembered from last time too. But what you'd wanna do is navigate to where your pictures are stored on this one. I'm just gonna go over to the viewer here and what I'm going to do in this tutorial is just kind of go through all these right through here and kind of give you a quick walkthrough of each one because in this program you'll see right away uh, you'll start playing with it and have a, have a lot of fun and learn a lot of things on your own once you know where a few things are. So with the viewer, I can change the uh, the view of this just if I'm in grid view right now, but if I wanted something like a list or to the single one or full screen, you can do it like this. I'm just going to exit out and go back to my grid view. Down at the bottom, I can change the thumbnail size here so I can drag this back, uh, you know, if you wanted them larger or smaller, just drag this to the way you want. So what I'm gonna do now is just go to the editor. Now at this part uh, of the editor, I have a couple of choices. I can open up an image, so I could go ahead and open up an image and go to that folder and open it up. I could create a brand new, so if I wanted one with, like, with a background, I could pick my sizes in this one and my background and hit okay, and then I'll have a blank, uh, blank one to draw on, and I'll talk about that a little later too. But for what I'm gonna do is, since I've already navigated to the folder here, I'm just gonna drag this over and it puts the image right in. So right away, some of the things that I can do, I'm under the edit, so as soon as I drag the picture in, it create, it showed me all these were highlighted so I can perform these tasks now. So under edit, look at the quick things you can do. So if you wanted to resize this, uh, you can see it's 2249 by uh, 1500. So I what I like to do is resize. Uh, you can change, you could see it in the different measurements too, but units, but I'm gonna leave it like that. I could shrink this right down and I can see this now would be about six, you know, in the 600s by 400s and I can hit apply and now it's a lot smaller. And if I save this, it's gonna be a smaller file. So depending, do I need it on a web or where am I putting this? Maybe I need to make these a bit smaller. I'm gonna actually revert. So I could go back a step at all the time. I could go undo or on your keyboard, hit control Z, revert brings it back to the original uh, one and the undo will do the last step. Now, check a, uh, take a look at some of the other quick ones. So if you wanted to do some cropping, you could uh, select crop, pick an area, and then go ahead and hit crop on this one. Now, if this is what you wanted, you could hit save, like so if I click it, and then you could go through and save to, save right away, or if you want to do save as, because what this allows you to do, you can see I can drop down and make an adjustment. Do I want it as a JPEG, PNG, GIF, uh, bitmap, or TIFF on it? So you can pick what you'd want. I'm not saving this one right now. I just wanted to make sure, look down at the bottom right to save uh, your work. Again, I'm gonna revert this back. Now, there's lots of other effects uh, uh, that you can go through under edit. You can see how you can expand any of these. I'm not gonna go through, you can go through and play with these and see that what each one of these do, uh, do just by simply, simply selecting them and they'll have adjustment ones like this and you'll see that there's usually an amount to change uh, or the, everything's just a simple click to see how to make the adjustments. And if you like it, hit apply. And if you don't, hit cancel. Now going through the uh, top here, you can see we have color. We can make some, uh, I can make some quick changes if I wanted it uh, to be bright, brightened or change the vibrance in it. But again, 
apply or cancel. So if I hit cancel, it goes back to normal. We have our film that as I hover over it, you can see how it quickly gives you that preview of what you're going to get. If I scroll down a bit and you'll notice this, that there is a pro version to this. I'm using the free version. Uh, so in the free version, you won't be able to use uh, these ones. That's for the upgrade one. So whenever you see the pro, that's what that means. Uh, I'm going to keep moving on here. Again, we have light. We can change. You can see how the effects are added to them. Just simply click and adjust the scale and the amount down below. If you want to add some cool frames around your pictures, you can see all the different ones. Uh, very easy as soon as you click on them you can see how it's adjusted and when you apply so you hit apply and then you can just hit save and then you'll have it again I'm just gonna revert this back to how it was you have the insert up here so at this point you can go through I could insert things like uh, like an arrow so if I wanted to call something out I could go ahead and point to this and again I can make these different uh, different uh, features adding to it. You can see how I can make an outline, change the colors. It, it's super easy to use because everything and it shows you that preview right away as you adjust it too. So if I wanted it gone, if I click on it, I can just hit delete and it goes off too. So you can take a look at all the different things that you can add through here. The last thing, um, uh, actually, you know what? You can see how you can go through again i'm just going to click on a few of these just to show you some of the other features like if you wanted to add your text uh, you could go through and then just type what you want here so you can see as i'll just type uh, hello here and i can go through and adjust it quickly so if i wanted it if i didn't want an outline on it if i wanted to transform it go through and play a drop shadow i have the distance that i could go through and I can move this around and adjust it how I want it to go on it. So again, very simple to use to get some high quality results to your images on this. I'm just gonna go back. I'm gonna hit delete on this. Uh, the last part that I wanted to show you, because I know you'll probably wanna go through and probably have a lot of fun just checking out these tools. Look at these tools here. So if I go under the tool here, uh, I can draw right on this. So if you wanted to have your brush, you can go ahead and start drawing. You can hit pick your uh, colors if you want on it. Again, there's the apply on it or undo uh, back to the normal. I'm just gonna go back a step uh, because you can. the one I wanted to show you, you can see again, there's the pro, the clone stamp that's popular in like Photoshop and different other features that I've, or other free ones that I've seen is in here. But then we have, uh, look at the uh, spot healing brush. So this is kind of fun. I'm gonna make the brush size larger here. So let's say we have this image and I go through, I'm just gonna make this larger again. I want it to, okay, right here. So if I go ahead and click on this and that person's gone. So if I, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. So if I wanted to just have this surfer in this, if I just start clicking on a few of these things like this, notice how quickly I'm taking everybody out so now a lot of people wouldn't even realize so even with this person right over there I quickly edited all those people out so again just go through all these features and if it says pro it won't uh, you won't be able to use it but just go click on these things and start having fun with some of the editing that you can do with the images so now I'm going to move over to the cutout. You can see it's right after editor. And I'm just going to drag this picture of the dog on the beach. So what cutout allows me to do is I can get, uh, I want to get rid of the sky and just have the, the puppy left on the beach. So what I'm going to do with, uh, once I drag this over, you can see I have magic eraser, lasso, and brush. Now what I'm gonna do is hit the plus, I just click, sorry, just click, and you can see things are going away. So what is it? What It's getting rid of the similar colors, kind of groupings of colors all together. I can increase the tolerance. So let's say if I, I'm gonna just revert back to normal and I'm gonna increase the tolerance all the way up and I'm gonna hit click again. And as I go around, because if I get rid of, you can see now it took out even bigger chunks on it. So you might want to adjust this tolerance uh, to get it done quicker, uh, depending on what the colors are like. So there's also the lasso, 
where you can see where I can erase or restore if I maybe made a mistake. So if I was erasing, I could go and pick a part and if I circle around it, it goes away like so. But if I made a mistake, if I draw it again, it puts it back. I'm just gonna undo that one. There's also the brush. So this allows you to get a little bit more fine tuned and everything too. So remember you have your restore and erase. So I can quickly erase over, you can see as things are going away as I click. Sometimes what I like to do is just to click. I could make my brush a little bit smaller, but as I go around uh, this, so I can get rid of that part, get rid of this part. And this, you might not have to do very much. If I would have changed my tolerance at the very beginning, uh, maybe I wouldn't have to, uh, done that and I could have just clicked on different parts. But for this, I just wanted to show you all three parts of it. You can see if I click on maybe a different color, what's good with this, because now it shows me these things, so you might not be able to see it before, but as I click through these, just on that different color, it gives me uh, just easier to spot. And you can uh, just, if you wanted to kind of compare, if I click on uh, these here on the original, I just click on it and it shows me the original. So right now, on this case, I have eliminated the background of it. I could do a little bit better job, but if you want to eliminate it or maybe put a different background behind it, you could do that. But I could go ahead and just hit save now, and then that background would be eliminated. So that's the cutout uh, part of this. So next, I wanna move over to the batch. So with batch, right here what batch does is allow you to put a bunch of pictures in and apply um, apply whether it be a filter or maybe resizing all at once so you don't have to go one by one by one so i could grab one image and and grab it in and put it in so if i grab it and drop it in here i could do that uh, or i could grab them all like so now I notice there's a filter. Uh, this is the one thing to know. This is, I had this turned on last time. You can see right there, the lens flare. So it remembered what I was already in here for. So what it does though, is if I pick, let's say this one and going back, let's say to the lighting, cause it's easy to see. I had the lens flare there. If I click on it and hit apply, uh, you could see now that is on every one. So it allows me to just go through and every one will get changed on it. So it makes it an easy way to change uh, multiple pictures and you can see all the different things that you can do and you make the adjustment to these. So if you do have a bunch of pictures, maybe there's a lighting, lighting or sizing thing that you, rather than doing them one at a time, look at batch. Okay, so now moving over to collage, this is another fun tool inside um, inside Photoscape X and it's very easy to use. So right away, they just have these presets for a collage. So if, if I look around, you can see there are pro ones, but there's lots of great free ones. So if I was dragging an image in, well, I grab two, it just instantly just put them into those spots. I can move them around and adjustment the way I want. I can adjust how many uh, frames and everything I need. You can see as I click on uh, different ones, it changes the style and I can have spacing difference and the margins. Again, all these things are just simply clicking and then you'll get it perfectly the way you want from even changing the background and do a pay, pay attention to where the difference with pro and everything is too. So when you're done it, just go down, hit save, uh, and then, then you're good to save it and you can do what you want from there, whether you share it with somebody digitally or print it out. Now combine is kind of like collage in a way. What you can do there is if I drag an image across uh, into here, again, I, I put everything in there. So I'm gonna just actually delete, uh, remove. So what I did there, I highlighted them all and right clicked and remove because I had them all selected. If I was only bringing one in at a time, I want, uh, so if I bring in another image, you can see how it uh, put it through because I'm right now, you could see how if I have it based on height in here, depending on you want it on the first image, do you want it vertical, horizontal, uh, all these different ways. But what it's really doing is it, it's just taking an image and making, uh, combining it in the way that you want. So again, play with all these different options when you're done hit save. So that's kind of what combine does for you. 
gifts are very popular and this program makes it really easy to make a gift and again i'm just using kind of the same pictures that i have but what you can do is so if i take them all let's say this time i grab them all drag them in here and it automatically created a gift based on the settings that it already have you can see these are the settings over here. So we have uh, our duration of 0.72 of a second. So if I, I could bring that down or up, I can apply to selected, apply to all. Uh, I can add transitions so I could have them slide up. If I click, uh, click on different ones, so you pick what you want uh, on it. But I'm going to go through go through a few more here, so you can go through the size of it. I can type something. So if I want to type high, and you can actually select where you want it. And notice the lighting is kind of bright; it doesn't show up. Just put an outline around it, and then you can increase the size of this too. So you can write these little things on it. Remember, gifts are just simple little things, short little things that people are sharing. But when you're done your gift you hit save and you get the option of looping forever. You can see how many times you want it to loop and you go ahead and hit save and you'll see the GIF option come up right there. So it makes it very quick and easy. If you've wondered how to make some GIFs, this is a quick way to do it. Now let's move over to print. Print, uh, what I love about this program, everything's just drag and drop and then explore over on the right. Now, same thing, so if I was dragging an image in, uh, drop it in, I'd grab them all again because they were all selected. It just set up a page to print. So based on, uh, you can see, based on the presets that are there, you can go through and make all these ones. So depending if maybe you wanted to print out your some photos and you'd be able to scan through them, look at them on paper, you could do that. Uh, so you set it up based on the paper size and everything that you want. Uh, you can see again how you can just uh, customize this to what you want makes it really easy to print your pictures so the last thing under tools here this is if you wanted to do a screen capture you could capture the image of what's on your screen you could use the color picker to pick out a color uh, you just go over and click it and kind of that's the quick uh, you know that's kind of the it in a quick run through with photoscape the other thing i wanted to show you i'm just going to go back to editor I mentioned about uh, about starting with a blank sheet. So if I go down to the uh, bottom right hand corner here and click on this, notice I have uh, new. So I could go new and this is, I could adjust it. I'm just gonna leave it at 800 by 800. I'll leave it as a white background. But what this allows, if you wanted to create something from scratch and maybe go to your insert where you could be uh, or drawing or go to your draw tools or insert text and kind of create your own little uh, thing without an image background or maybe you insert images over top of it and you put it on and you're designing everything kind of scratch with that background, you can do that in this program too. So I think uh, if you're just looking for some uh, fun with photo editing and some simple painting, this could be a program for you. Remember what I mentioned at the beginning, if you're looking for other ones to test out, take a look at that video about my five favorite uh, uh, free video, or sorry, not video, uh, image editors on it. Uh, I'll, and the links are up, up and below in the card and in the description. Let me know what other things you wanna learn with different photo editing uh, things in the description down below. But that's all for this week. Remember, I do these weekly tech tips and tutorials, and I thank you for watching this week, and I'll see you next time on Teacher's Tech.